Well, last week, Eric kicked off our Vital Signs series, and I don't know about you, but it was a challenging message for me to receive. Eric did a great job of outlining the expectations that God has for us to live out being disciples, not at certain defined times of our schedules, but rather as we are going, as we are living life, we are to always be living out as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Before we get into this week's focus, please stop the video, pull up the discussion guide that you can find in the description below. This guide provides your group a template of sorts for the time that your group gathers, including prayer points, Bible exploration, questions to discuss together, and even more. This week, Pastor Tom delivered a message on the first key vital sign as a Jesus follower, the need to abide. This concept to abide means to remain, to continue in, to stay with, or to maintain an unbroken connection. And the key scripture came from John 15, which included this found in verses 4 through 6. Abide in me and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. Pastor Tom spoke to these verses, as well as verses 7 through 12, to bring out several key indicators to the health of one's abiding in the Lord, including the need to know the Word. Reading the Bible needs to be a part of your daily, regular rhythm and routine. Hearing from the Word of God only once a week while attending church is not abiding in his word or in him. Next, Pastor Tom shared that it's not simply enough to, to know the word, but there's a need to obey the word. Yeah, it's good to know and maybe even memorize scripture, but if a person doesn't heed the word or if they choose to ignore it or just choose to cherry pick their favorite parts that they're going to follow and ignore the rest, they move away from the source. In other words, if you don't obey what God instructs, you're separating yourself from Him, and this is a sign that you are not abiding in Him. Tom also shared the need to abide in God through a connection via prayer. Just as we are to abide in the Word, we are to be in constant communication with God through prayer. Finally, Pastor Tom talked about the proof of our abiding through the spiritual fruit that are produced. See, we are incapable of producing good fruit on our own, but when good fruit is being produced, it's because of our connection with and abiding in the Lord. And I want to share with you another scripture of what happens when you put God first in your life, when you place Him at the very start of your day, and then when you stay with Him and you walk with Him and you talk with Him during the day, and you most definitely end your day with God. The commonality in all of this is abiding in his presence. Look at Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. When we seek to remain in the presence of God through prayer, his word, walking in faith, not in sight, we are dwelling in the shelter of the Most High God. And to abide in him is to take a permanent residence in God. Where when we discover ourselves under the shadow of God, we discover his protection. What do we have to be fearful of when we're under his protection? What can plague you? He can protect us better than our home with every door and window locked. And he provides more security than a fortified bunker. So I urge you to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. When you're feeling the full heat of the fire that comes from life's troubles, run to God. Get on your knees, remain in prayer, abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Before your group turns to prayer, I ask that you take a few moments to reflect and to look at your own life. What are you dwelling on? Is it the what-ifs of this world? Do you dwell on the past? Do you dwell in worry? Are you dwelling on that problem that popped up in your life? What is it that you are dwelling on today? Because if it is not God Almighty, if you're not dwelling in the secret place of the Most High, then friend, I urge you to come to the Lord and to take shelter in His comfort, hide under His shadow. If you struggle with anything similar to the, what I just described, it may be a sign that you need to spend more time abiding in Christ. It may mean that you have room to grow in your faith and to trust that He will take care of you and all your needs. Take heart in Jeremiah 17, verses 7 and 8. It says, 
Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. We are told that when our trust is in the Lord Jesus, we will be like the tree planted by the waters. Meaning, I, I have nothing to fear. I, I won't be anxious in the year of drought. He will keep me and sustain me and protect me from the heat that seeks to destroy me. Because he is King Jesus and he is the one and only true source. So let the storm, the wind, the rain come because I will be sheltered by my Savior. I invite you and your group to walk through the guide, spend time talking specifically about how everyone is doing at abiding under the shadow of the Lord. Invite God in to search your heart, reveal any warning signs of just how you are doing, staying connected to him. And then join us next time when we look at the importance of confessing.